So have you ever read sections of your Bible uh, where you're reading and it just becomes like uh, boring or you're just like, why am I reading this? And like, I know we're Christians and we're not supposed to say that, but, but can I, can I shoot you straight? Like sometimes I read some of these gene, genealogies and I'm like, who cares? And let's just keep flipping the pages. But, but, uh, I'm not proud of that. But, but here's what I have learned over the years is it's in those areas, uh, at times that God can surprise you with what he shows you. And I, I know like Matthew's gospel, it begins with a genealogy and it's like, won't, won't, won't. But as you start to dig into that genealogy, uh, the lineage of Jesus, and it's amazing, you start seeing some of the, the, the characters and the scoundrels that were in the line of Christ, um, prostitutes and murderers and just not good people. You know what? Uh, a couple things that uh, makes me feel better about my own family uh, lineage, and uh, it, as well, it gives me hope for me that God can work uh, through someone, uh, through people with issues. And for the record, we all have issues, all right? Um, I can remember as well, I was reading through the, the book of Nehemiah. It's a great book, but it starts to bog down uh, when they start talking about the rebuilding of the wall around Jerusalem. And listen, it's it's not an entertainment building show like HGTV or anything like that. But rather, I mean, there's this entire section where it's like so-and-so built beside so-and-so built beside so-and-so. And it can become unbelievably monotonous. But when, when I dialed in, suddenly I noticed in Nehemiah 3.16, it says, as they were building the wall, suddenly they throw in this nugget. It says in Nehemiah 3.16 that they, they rebuilt uh, the house of heroes. I was like, what is that? I mean, I had to look up in all my, my concordances and uh, it was it was a house built for the Geborim or the mighty men. And so I was fascinated by that. And so our text today, if you're not careful, you're going to skim right through this thing because we're going to be in First Chronicles today. I know you've all been enjoying reading First Chronicles, but Chronicles can be a tough read, man. It's like reading the phone book, you know. It's just, it's, it's a uh, the chronicle uh, of of just the lineage uh, of the tribes of Judah. And as as you start reading this thing, it's like, oh man, boring, blah blah blah. But get this, uh, right in the middle of the monotony, suddenly it, it's like uh, the author of the book of Chronicles, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, double clicks on this section. And now it just stops and zooms in uh, on this man. Uh, his Jewish name is Yebetz, uh, but you may know him uh, through the English transliteration, Jabez. All right, and that's where we're going to be, is in the prayer of Jabez. It's going to be in First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. It says this in verse 9, it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. Verse 10, Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from harm, so that might so that it might not bring me pain. And God granted what he asked. And so, um, man, so if the author of, of Chronicles, he, he double clicked on this, this character, Jabez, um, let's have us dial down a little bit and, and look at this man. And so, um, uh, notice this. It begins by saying, uh, that, that, that he was honorable. He was more honorable than his brothers. And so I believe this is the reason why they stopped the whole chronicle, uh, of, of the lineage of the tribe of Judah. They, they, it was interrupted. Why? Because there's something attractive about uh, honorable men and women. Uh, there just is. Like like um, humanity, we're drawn to people that honor uh, other people. And you know what? So is Almighty God. So the, the word for honor uh, in Hebrew, it's the word kabod. It means to be heavy or weighty. And so uh, you have to ask yourself the question this morning, uh, are you honorable? And if you're like, hey, pastor, if you're asking me, am I heavy or weighty? The answer is yes. Um, after the holidays, put on a few pounds. That's not what I'm talking about. But but maybe I, the Bible is kind of talking that way because, um, like, listen, if you think about the word to be heavy or weighty, and, and it's this idea of tipping the scales, right? And so with the, the heaviest portion is always going to get the, the, the bulk of your attention, your affection, your service, 
your loyalty. And so what is that thing that weighs the scale of your life that most of your life is pointed to? Um, we've done it another way before. We said this, that, um, that, that man, that, that Jesus, he must become the weightiest part of our life. Or if, if we were going to get back to old arithmetic, right? If you remember that, the greater than sign, uh, Jesus is greater than whatever you put in. And I, I know, uh, man, we had, uh, uh, a great, uh, woman in our church, uh, Ellen and Jessica. They, they actually made this cup for me and I just so love it because it is, it is what we're talking about today. Jesus is greater than whatever you want to put uh, in that other section. And so he is, why? Because we honor Jesus above everything else. And if you remember, um, remember when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness? What did the devil go after? He went after uh, his honor. And so get, remember what he does? It was like, man, trying to tip the scales for Jesus Right. And so Jesus is honored his father. He says, I only do what my father does. I only say what my father says. And so what does the devil do? He tries to, he tries to increase the weight on this side. And so he says, I'll offer you bread, Jesus. Nope. I'll offer you riches. I'll offer, I'll offer you kings and kingdoms. I'll offer you glory and nothing could tip the scales. Why? Because Jesus, uh, all the honor went to his heavenly father. And so, um, get this, um, Honor, it, it always says this, you first, you first. Let me read to you Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Um, and I love how Paul puts this. He says, love one another with a brotherly affection. And then he says, outdo one another in showing honor. Isn't that amazing? It's like, like Paul is, is creating a new competitive sport. Uh, I will out honor you. And the first one to 10 is going to win. Okay. And so, listen, this is who we want to be in our church. We want to be a people that honor God, but a people that honor one another as well. Like, I hope we have awkward moments uh, in our church that that when you come, there's that awkward moment where, where someone holds the door for you and you're like, no, you go, no, you go, no, you go, right? And why? Because we're just... Man, I'm not going to be out honored by you. That, that we should have a log jam, uh, in the hospitality area where the coffee is. No, sir, you first. No, you first. No, you first. Right. And, and so, uh, I will out honor you. Honor says you're first. You know, in Matthew 6.33, um, I'll read it for you, but, but it's, it's basically saying, Hey, if, if you put God first, then God will be, be sure to make sure everything else is taken care for in your life. Uh, uh, God first and everything else will follow. Matthew 6, 33, it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. See, honor says, God, you go first. And so let's be a people that honor God. May that be your focus as we enter here into 2022. May you want to be a person that honors God. And so what do you do? You, you, you honor God with the first of your day. That's why I, when the first thing I do when I get up in the morning, man, I get into that word and get into prayer. Why? Because it's about honor. God, you first. You, you get the first of my day. How about this? The, the first of your week. It's, it's Sunday, the first day of the week. It, it is the Sabbath. It's the day historically where, where we go to church. Why? Because God, I want to honor you and give you the first uh, of my week. How about, um, we're, we're embarking on a week of prayer and fasting at, at the beginning of each and every year. God, we want to dedicate the first part of our year unto you. Why? Because it's honor. So, um, and for the record, for those of you, our online audience, man, if you would like to join us in honoring God in, in a week of prayer and fasting, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, actually some prayer and fasting guides that are made available to you digitally. If you go to our website, encnj.org. We're actually going to have prayer meetings at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. You can call and be a part of these prayer meetings. Uh, all that information you can find on our website. But but wouldn't that be an amazing way to start your year by honoring God? Uh, I'll get this uh, out as well. Do you know, um, I believe that we're to honor God with the first of our finances. And here's the great news. God promises as we do that, then he's going to care for us. All right. And so i um, I'll, I'll end this section with this is, you know, in 1 Samuel 2.30, that, that uh, God speaks uh, to the prophet Eli, and he tells Eli this. He says, I honor those who honor me, that the Lord honors those who honor him. And I want to tell you something. That's pretty amazing. That's a great trade for you. 
and for me. And so let's get back to our text here, the prayer of Jabez. And, and notice that the name uh, Jabez, it means to be born in pain. That his mother named him. It means he makes me sorrowful. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Right? Thanks for the great name. And uh, names are funny. I can remember when we, uh, the birth of my, my first daughter, uh, Cassandra, uh, uh, like it's funny as a, as a pastor, you hear, I, I'm always kind of like humbled by people that name their kids, all these biblical names, like, you know, Micah, Judah and Esther and so on and so forth. And then you get the pastor, um, just to shoot you straight, how we named my, uh, my firstborn Cassie, Cassandra, excuse me. Um, uh, my wife and I were fans of two soap operas, uh, the young and the restless and days of our lives and days of our lives had Kayla. And, and the young and the restless had Cassandra. And we were wrestling between the two and we wound up going with the name Cassandra. Little did we know, um, uh, that, that name, uh, in, in the Greek, uh, it means prophetess of doom. <laughs> and my daughter's like, thanks, mom and dad, right? <laughs> but, but this name, being born in pain, immediately that should click off in your head. That's Genesis 3 language. That's language from the fall. And if you remember, Adam and Eve sin against God. And God says that the, the ground is, that the earth is cursed now. And it's, he tells the man, now labor is going to become toil and the earth is going to war against you. And he tells the woman that you're going to experience pain in childbirth. And so all of these were designed to remind us that the world is broken. It's not as it should be. And with all that, see, so you and I, we should never be surprised um, that if we experience difficulty, pain, or sorrow, we just shouldn't. And so uh, we're, we're in a Genesis 3 world. So, um, uh, you know, playing uh, uh, for 14 years in the NHL, I've got like a number of bumps and bruises. And, and so, uh, listen, I, I can remember uh, playing a game and I was standing in front of the net and a guy let a slap shot go. And, you know, slap shots can go up to 90, 120 miles an hour. And this thing hit me square in the jaw and wound up splitting my jaw in two in two places. I was wired shut for 40 days. Uh, so I heard to talk like this. And uh, and then uh, I remember as well, uh, I got in a little bit of a scrap and we dropped the gloves. And then this guy hit me with the left and he shattered the left side of my face and and put like uh, five plates and 13 screws uh, in my face to, to repair it. And and then lastly, I, I always enjoy this one that uh, I went in the corner, my body went one way, but my pinky, it went the other way and, and it dislocated. But But get this, Never once during those moments did I be like, God, how could you? How could you allow that? <laughs> Why? Because I knew, hey man, the, the world of hockey, it's violent, at times bloody, and unbelievably aggressive. And so stuff like that is going to happen. And likewise, that you and I living in a Genesis 3 world, it's, it's violent, aggressive, and at times bloody. And so, but, but here's, I, I say that, listen, the gospel is good news. Um, and get this, see, but, but you and I, though we live in a Genesis 3 world, we are not victims. We are not helpless victims, but because of the cross of Christ, we're victorious. We're victors. And so I, I, I uh, heard the story of uh, Kenny Sailors uh, recently. I just love this story. And so if you're not familiar, Kenny Sailors, um, he and his brother, they loved playing basketball on their farm in Wyoming back in, this is back in the 1930s. And so, uh, but so Kenny's older brother was 6'5". Kenny was 5'7". Can we agree there's a bit of a disadvantage to that? But Kenny didn't see it as a disadvantage. See, he knew he wasn't a victim, but he was going to vic be victorious. And so you know what he learned to do? He learned to jump, to elevate, and then he shot the ball with one hand. And with that, what was the invention of the, 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 now what we call it, the jump shot, right? And get this, Kenny Sailors went on to, to play NCAA basketball and he would win actually, uh, right in New York City at Madison Square Gardens. They'd win the NCAA championship and he would be the MVP. And, uh, and here's a, what I love. See, Kenny Sailors, he realized, man, I, I'm not a victim that, that when circumstances are against me, all I got to do is I elevate. And in the same way, you and I, and we are not victims, that we have an unfair advantage in Jesus Christ. And that's this. We can elevate. 
we can go vertical immediately to our Heavenly Father. When circumstances, when, when, when darkness starts to press in, what do we do, man? We jump shot and we immediately go vertical to our Heavenly Father. And that's what Jabez did. Because it says that Jabez called upon the Lord. And then I love, he, he says this, Oh, that you would bless me. Oh, that you would bless me. I mean, what a great prayer uh, to pray right here in 2022. Oh, God, that you would bless me. And, and listen, um, like a little bit of my history is I got a little baggage uh, as far as it goes with the, the prosperity gospel type of thing. When I, my early Christian walk, I mean, I was like all about prosperity. What can I get from God? And, and, uh, and then as I, I matured in the Lord and, and then, man, I swung the pendulum the other way. Then it's kind of like, no, God wants us to, he needs us to suffer so we can get strong and he can cut, cut away our flesh. And I almost became ascetic. And so by God's grace through, through, uh, maturity, I started to get more balanced in my approach. But, but I say that to say this, you know what? As I examine the word of God, here's what I've come to believe that is true is that the, though there might be times of wilderness season, there's a God that sits above it all, and he's a God who blesses. He's a God who blesses. And so, a uh, little exercise for me. Can you do this? So, uh, what is your first memory? Like, if you can go back as far as you can remember, what is your first memory? And uh, and here's what I, I, I say that to get this. Now, do you, I want to give you Adam and Eve's first memory. They were created, formed and fashioned by God. And, and then... Uh, it says this, that God blessed them. Like the first memory of humanity and mankind is that of a God who's a God of blessing. He blessed his people. How about this? Fast forward to Noah and the flood. God judges the earth and he spares Noah and his family. And the first words as they get off the boat after the flood is this. It says that God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Uh, fast forward to Genesis 12. God goes to a man named Abraham and get this. He cuts a new covenant with this man, Abraham. And here's what he says to him in Genesis 12, 1 to 3. It says, now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I don't know if you saw that. That's a lot of blessing. Five blessings in three verses because we serve a God who blesses. Uh, if you still don't believe me and I've not beat this horse enough, Jesus shows up on the scene and, and uh, the greatest sermon Jesus ever preached uh, was the sermon on the Mount. And do you remember how he began his sermon. He began with the Beatitudes. Beatitude means the blessings, right? And he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after God. Uh, blessed are those uh, who seek righteousness, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, so on and so forth. And, and then uh, uh, I'll just put the cherry on top with this. The last thing Jesus did as he was on planet earth, the Bible says in Luke chapter 24, that, that as he ascended on high, it says he blessed his disciples. And so we stirred of God a blessing. But, um, but I want to put a little asterisk, a little warning label uh, on blessing. And that is this. Man, be sure that you're chasing the blesser and not the blessing. You're chasing the blesser and not the blessing. Because, I mean, the Bible says this. It says, what good is it if you gain the entire world and you lose your soul? In other words, if you get everything but lose Jesus what do you really have? And so um, I, I'm painfully aware of this. I, like I said early on in my walk with Jesus, like I wanted God to bless me. And, and uh, I remember I was trying out for Team USA. And I was uh, up in uh, Colorado, up at the Air Force Academy. And we had this tryout. And I was trying to be extra good, man. I was reading my Bible. Man, I was praying. I was dialed into the Lord. Why? Because I wanted him to bless me, to be honest with you. And guess what? I wound up making the team. And then, and then I did what every Christian would do after God blesses, right? I went out and I got hammered with my teammates. And as we're walking the streets of, of Colorado Springs and jumping from bar to bar, uh, suddenly uh, there's a guy out on the street corner and he's giving, handing out tracts preaching about Jesus. And all my teammates started to make fun of this guy. And you want to talk about a buzzkill. 
I mean, the Lord sobered me up like this fast. And so uh, I, I, I waited after and I shooed the, the, uh, my teammates away from this guy and, and thanked this guy. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me clean, um, plain as day. I felt the Lord tell me this. He says, hey, do you want me or do you just want to use me uh, for blessing? And you know what? That was a game changer in my life. That was an absolute game changer because I realized in that moment, I, it's Jesus uh, that I want not the blessing. Um, we can go on and he says this. He says, uh, um, won't you bless me? And then he says, enlarge my borders. Or in other words, he's saying, Lord, increase my influence, increase my authority. And uh, here's a powerful formula for you. Is this, is this greater intimacy with God will lead to greater authority with men. Greater intimacy with God will lead to greater authority with men. And, and if you just look uh, in the rearview mirror of history, you can't deny it. Like, like Moses and David, intimate walks with, G- with the Lord, and yet they, they were just simple shepherds, right? And yet what did they do? Uh, they, they began to conquer lands, uh, that they, they spoke with kings, and they built a, a nation and a kingdom. Uh, you, bring, you can bring it into our time that this simple woman, uh, Mother Teresa, or fast forward, even Billy Graham, these, 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 this man and woman that were intimate with God and he gave them all this authority in the earth with kings and dignitaries and nations. And so there's a, there's a principle at work here um, that if you're faithful with little things, that God will make you a ruler over much. You're faithful with things, little things, that God will increase your influence. And so uh, I heard, I read an amazing story. It was in uh, Mark Batterson's book, Do It For A Day. And it talks about, uh, you know, in 1847, there was a civil engineer and he was charged to build a bridge across Niagara Falls. And so uh, the, the great hurdle was at this time, you know, in 1847, it's not like they can just get a drone and, and fly a cable. They didn't know how to get the cable from one side of the, the uh, Niagara Falls to the other. And so until one man came up with uh, a, a fascinating idea, they said, let's fly a kite over. And so they actually had a contest at Niagara Falls. Anybody could participate to see who could fly a kite and land it from one side of the falls to the other. And get this, a 15-year-old kid flew his kite over and he won the prize, 10 bucks, which I'm guessing in 1847 was pretty good. And then what they did is they took the young man's kite string from from one side of the the falls to the other, and then they attached a, a little bit thicker cable to it. And then after that cable, they hooked a little bit thicker cable and a little bit thicker until finally they had this massive steel cable that went from one side of the falls to the other. And out of that cable, they built the world's first uh, railway suspension bridge, the first one ever. And it could hold a 170 ton locomotive and it connected two countries together. And so I say that to say this, like a small string was transformed into a suspension bridge. And so if you can be faithful in something so small, like it can be transformative to your life, just like that string began to grow and to increase as you're, as you're faithful in your times of intimacy. Maybe it's nothing too large, it'll begin to grow in your walk with God. And so um, um, let me give you a couple opportunities here as we're in 2022 is um, I, I want to let you in on, do you know that we have a, actually a Bible reading plan uh, that we're doing as a church? Again, you can find all this information on our website, but it's reading through the New Testament in a year. And listen, if you'd like to, you can join right in with us, okay? And so, but it's what? It's about 10 minutes of reading every day, something very small, but it's building something very big on the inside. Uh, and then as well, I'd like to invite you to come join us in our, our, we have a week of prayer and fasting from Monday, uh, January 10th to Friday, January 14th. Uh, we have prayer calls at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. And so you're welcome to come join us uh, in a week of prayer and fasting. And listen, maybe you just just fast. Uh, it's it's one meal a day, or, or maybe you just fast social media, or, or maybe you just give God an extra hour of prayer. But but I promise you that little things God can transform into big things. And this little step of intimacy with God can lead to great authority uh, with men. And so I hope you can join us for that. And then uh, lastly is this, 
um, the last part of the prayer of Jabez, he says, uh, he says, uh, um, that, that, uh, that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. And so that stood out to me. He says that your, your hand, your hand might be with me. And so what, what that, the hand represents, the hand of God, it's, it's, it's the presence, the provision, uh, the power, the protection of Almighty God with you. And if you have that, then He will protect you, uh, from the pain of a Genesis 3 world. Uh, I'm reminded of the apostle, the apostle Paul. He says, man, I can do all things, anything, through Christ, as long as the hand of God is with me, I can go through anything a Genesis world, three world has to offer. So, um, I'll land the plane with this is I was reading a fascinating article in the Huffington Post. Um, there was a recent study by Manhattansville, uh, college right here in, in New York. And here's what the research revealed. And I'm just going to read for you the science. Uh, it says this, that, that dog owners are happier, more sociable, and earn bigger salaries than cat owners. And um, it did say this though, that, that cat owners are more likely to enjoy their own company. So congratulations, all right? <laughs> and listen, if you're, if you're mad at me, if you're that cat guy or girl, don't get mad at me, it's the science. Get mad at the science, all right? And uh, I say that to, to reference my, my, my youngest golden retriever. His, his name is Marshall and I'm always a little bit nervous when he's around other people because he will, he will attempt to, to grab, uh, people's wrists and then he'll, he'll pull it down. And so some people, they, they think, oh, he's biting me. And I'm like, no, he's not biting you. He wants your attention. And so he'll grab your hand and he'll try to bring you down to his level. And so, um, uh, here's what I, I can't help but wonder. See, I, I would, I would say this, that, that through the cross of Christ, God has extended his hand out to you. But my question is, how many of us will reach back and take hold of that hand? Like, are you reaching out, trying to grab God and, and bring him back down to you? Um, see, he, the, uh, Jabez, he knew this, man, I need the hand of God on my life. And so listen, we have this unique opportunity as, as a church, we're entering into a week of prayer and fasting to, to reach out by faith, and honor God with the first of our year. And then here's what I love. And our text ends with this. And God granted what he asked. Let's pray. Father, I just uh, thank you uh, this morning just for your presence. And Lord, as we enter, uh, Lord, into a new year, God, I just pray, Lord, that you would do great and glorious things in our life. Lord, as we, we go through this week of prayer and fasting, I pray that you would, Lord, that, that our imagination uh, and our hope would increase and expand. Lord, I pray that you would, you would, uh, make us new in 22 in Jesus name. Lord, I pray to speak a blessing over us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.